seconds to go. We need a Minneapolis miracle. Case on a deep drop, steps up in the pocket. He'll fire to the right side. Off by Nick. Stay up. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever State of Purple Twitch cast. I am AJ Monsoor, KFAN Radio, out here live at Twin Cities Orthopedic Studios, uh, Stadium, Performance Center, whatever you want to call it, with the first ever State of Purple live Twitch cast. What we're doing today is recapping OTAs number one with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I guess it's number two technically, but media availability, availability, availability number one. Uh, we got to take a look at the new players. We got to take a look at the old players, see the new coaching staff, see some of the new things. Uh, uh, and uh, just bring a little perspective to this season's, um, you know, uh, Minnesota Vikings football team. We'll do this periodically as often as possible. Um, we'll go through OTAs. We'll go through mini camp. We'll go through the uh, the training camp as well and get going. And then uh, we'll see how we can handle or how we want to handle the regular season with the Minnesota Vikings as well and do some stuff like this. So this is going to be an interactive show. I'm here, as you can see. Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center. Um, you're wherever you are. You can hop on now. Jump in that chat. I want to support that chat. You ask me questions. Throw in some questions, what you think about the Minnesota Vikings, some things that you think you want to see, uh, what we saw today. I'll go over some stuff. We'll play back some video interviews. We'll play back some uh, some stuff that you can see, too, to check it out and really understand what happened today at uh, Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center with Minnesota Vikings OT. A's. Again, I'm AJ Monsoor. Uh, what this is, this is a Twitch cast, okay? We call it a Twitch cast. The State of Purple podcast is something that has existed in its entirety um, solely as a podcast in the past. You can get that podcast on iHeartRadio. You can get that podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your favorite podcast. It's available now. But what this is, is a Twitch cast. So this is going to be live streamed on Twitch. You can see the video. You can hear the audio. You can do whatever you want. And then I'm going to pull it down through the magics of the interweb and figure out how to get that audio posted to the podcast channel too. So if you're listening to this on the podcast channel, know that you can get this video over on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash AJKFAN. And if you're listening or viewing this on Twitch, know that if you want to listen back to this or share it with your friends, you can share this Twitch video or you can share it uh, the podcast on iHeartRadio or iTunes. So Minnesota Vikings OTAs number one. Uh, a couple things to stand out for this team uh, as OTAs get kicked off. Organized team activities. Some people call them optional team activities, and that was the case for Stefan Diggs today, who was not on. Uh, was the lone on. Lone uh, absentee, let's call it. The lone absentee today. Wide receiver Stefan Diggs not at the OTA today. No concern there. Uh, Minnesota uh, Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer was asked after practice if he was concerned that Stefan Diggs was not present. He said he had no concerns. No, no question about whether he's going to be there. The plan is to have Stefan Diggs on hand tomorrow. Kirk Cousins during his post-practice availability did mention that Stefan Diggs was going to be here tomorrow. He was excited to have Stefan Diggs back on the field. But today it was just Adam Thielen on one side and then free agent wide receiver Jordan Taylor filling in for Stefan Diggs on the other side. Taylor wasn't much of a factor today, but Adam Thielen sure was. Adam Thielen, Kirk Cousins, picking up right where they left off last season. Uh, fantastic catches on the sidelines for Thielen. Just They had that vibe, that connection today. Uh, try not to get too excited about OTAs and what you see out there, but one thing that does stand out is that those guys were rocking and rolling, ready to go. <clears throat> Uh, just like they were last season. So that'll pick up and, and hopefully continue as we go through the offseason programming, as we get into training camp, and then as we get into uh, preseason, and then the regular season. Uh, again, uh, this is a live interactive stream right now. So if you're watching right now, please hop in that comment section, throw me some questions. Uh, we'll get to answer them. I'll continue to highlight some of the other things that we learned today. One of them, maybe the most dramatic one that you're going to read about in the newspapers, on Twitter, online, wherever you do, is going to be the situation surrounding 
surrounding Kyle Rudolph. Tight end Kyle Rudolph, a veteran tight end. Uh, we all know the scenario that has popped up with his contract. Minnesota Vikings strapped for cash right now. Um, they had to restructure Eric Hendricks' contract just to sign their full draft class, get that first-round center Garrett Bradbury under contract before OTAs kicked off. Um, but where they sit right now with a 51-man um, roster for the salary cap is just barely below, I think, like $1.3 million in cap space. But when that season starts, you go with a 53-man roster. So they need to shave off some more salary cap just to operate and get into that regular season. So the problem uh, that that we thought we had with the salary cap, not signing uh, their rookie contracts, not getting uh, those guys in, in for OTAs, isn't over just yet. Uh, they do still have to do something before the season starts, and that 53-man roster does kick in. So Kyle Rudolph continues to be the focal point for that situation. There have been uh, reports that they've been working on a contract and renegotiation with him. He confirmed those reports today. He confirmed that his side and the Minnesota Vikings are both talking about a five-year contract extension, restructure whatever you want to call that. Um, no, how do they do that? How do you how do you go through and, and, and restructure a contract? Uh, you do it the same way that you did Eric Hendricks' contract. Uh, you give very little money this year, or you shave some money off this year. Uh, we're talking all the way down to the veteran's minimum if you want to. And then you give him a signing bonus. You transfer that money into signing bonus. It becomes guaranteed money. It becomes um, you know in his pocket right away. Uh, that's a benefit for Kyle Rudolph, but the real benefit could come on the back end of the contract. As they restructure it, how is it going to be... Um, laid out, I guess. Uh, how much guaranteed money is there going to be into the future? You look at the contract of someone like Everson Griffin, who has that restructured contract, shaved a little bit off for this year, but what really happened was he got rid of all the guaranteed money on the back end of his contract. So after this season, it, who knows what Everson Griffin's going to be. Uh, what up, non Shane Olson? Wait, welcome to uh, the State of Purple live Twitch cast. Thanks for the question. We'll get to questions in a little bit. Again, if you have one, submit it in the comment section. We'll get to it right away as we recap Vikings OTAs number one. Uh, so Kyle Rudolph did meet with the media today. I have some video here I'm going to get to of Kyle talking with the media, talking about um, his contract situation, uh, really discussing what it was, uh, what it what it is, where it is, how he is, um, you know, going forward, and how he's operating under the sense that there there may not be um, some the same sort of contract. So he did talk. Let me pop that over right quick. We'll get Kyle Rudolph. Well, there is clarity. Um... The Vikings, my agent, they're working extremely hard to get something done. Um, and with that being said, there's plenty of other teams that are interested as well. So uh, the clarity for me is that I get to come out here every day and work with my teammates and have fun at OTAs and be in this team setting that I enjoy. That was Kyle Rudolph uh, at practice today after practice he did speak and talked on his contract situation um, said some good things shared that there was some optimism with the two sides still talking about that five-year restructuring of his contract um, but he did mention one interesting thing I don't know if you caught it at the end there he mentioned that there are plenty of other teams interested what a weird thing to say. Not weird, maybe not, because we all know that there's trade talks. Uh, we've speculated. You've speculated. Kyle's probably speculated, trying to figure out what's going to happen to him next year. And the Minnesota Vikings have surely fielded phone calls uh, from Kyle Rudolph suitors, someone that might be interested. Um, he went on to later talk about how he has been told that there have been plenty of other teams interested. So uh, avoiding that, that that weird area of tampering. But I, I don't think that there's any question. You see the reports that come out in the public media about teams like the Patriots, the Jaguars, being good fits for Kyle Rudolph. It's question whether or not they've actually been uh, reached out to and whether or not they have actually touched touch base with the Minnesota Vikings. But according to Kyle Rudolph, there are teams that are interested um, that could could be a trade for future assets that could be a trade for young players um, but what that would do then would would be take that money that he has some six and change million dollars off the table for the Minnesota Vikings again the other option would be uh, getting him a veterans minimum and then signing uh, shifting some of that money over to a signing bonus we talked about that earlier um, what that would do is clear cap space this year push it back give him some more guaranteed money and allow him to renegotiate going forward 
Again, that's the question. What is it going to look like with Kyle Rudolph years from now? Is he going to get guaranteed money for next year? Is he going to get guaranteed money for years down the road? That's the big question. Uh, they did draft a tight end, Irv Smith Jr., who was there today. He looked okay. Uh, you know, he's still getting his feet. Uh, he worked a little bit with that first team with Kirk Cousins on the offensive side of the ball, uh, but he also was just kind of getting used to uh, a practice at the NFL level. They did practice yesterday. This was the first one that was available to media. This was his first practice in front of the lights, in front of the cameras uh, in at the NFL level. So he's still getting used to that. He's still working it out, but it was interesting to see him in there working with the number ones. Now, I want to remind you, too, there's another tight end on the roster here. Uh, David Morgan did sit out today. He was one of the players that did not practice and not participate, but the one that did pop out today, I guess pop out, flash, whatever you want to say, you noticed him, uh, was Tyler Conklin. Tyler Conklin was was brought in a couple years ago as a, a hard-nosed blocking tight end that can catch the football. Didn't really have much of a role last year, I think, under uh, Kevin Stefanski with Kirk Cousins in his second year. Uh, look for Conklin to, to maybe do some things this year. I don't know if he's going to, um, you know, jump up in front of Irv Smith, if he's going to compliment Kyle Rudolph. If, but he, what he does do is he gives that tight end room more depth, depth that maybe they think that they have enough of if they need to part ways with a guy like Kyle Rudolph. Uh, other players that you're paying attention to today, uh, players like Kirk Cousins. What was Kirk doing out there today? Uh, his rookie center, uh, Garrett Bradbury had his first opportunity to get out there and showcase what he's going to do. He was part of the first-team offensive line, an offensive line that went Riley Reef, uh, Pat Elfline at left guard, Garrett Bradbury at center, Josh Klein at right guard, and then Rashad Hill was actually filling in at right tackle today because Brian O'Neill was another player who was injured and not participating. I shouldn't say injured. He was not participating for one reason or another. He was not participating in today's organized team activities. Uh, Garrett Bradbury did stop and talk to us after the practice today. Here's a little video about his acclimation to the NFL and what he's learning uh, with Kirk Cousins under center. We'll see. Ro rotate you back and forth. Just how do you yeah. feel about that center spot? I mean, that's where I'm at right now, but I'm learning the system. I'm learning the interior three positions. Just like, uh, obviously, Pat's played center. He's a really good center, really good guard. And so we're all kind of learning the system together. So it's good that we can just bounce things off of each other um, and learn the system as a whole. It's not learning one position. You're going to get stuck if you do that. And so uh, just... The older guys have been great, and the younger guys always coming together trying to learn the new system um, and how it works. Hey, Gary, how, how important is it to kind of build that rapport with Kirk? You guys kind of keep that down. Yeah, it's, it's always huge on a team. Um, and he's been awesome. He's been welcoming, helpful. Uh, so just continue to build that, continue to build the continuity in the offensive line. Okay, back with you. Uh, Garrett Bradbury, again, filled in as the number one center with Pat Elfline at left guard to his side, Josh, Josh Klein on the other side at right guard. Garrett Bradbury, um, a highly touted rookie uh, center guard, uh, talked about how he's learning all those interior positions, the uh, the availability for an interior lineman to have that swing capability, move to the left guard, move to the right guard, sit in at center is very important. Um, injuries happen in the NFL. We know, especially here in Minnesota, offensive line injuries can really you know, provide a big detriment for your team if you don't have that depth or that skill in that swing spot. So now you've got Josh Klein that can swing. You've got Pat Alfline that can swing. And you have Garrett Bradbury that can swing. You have three guys there that can play those interior positions and really get it going. Um, and those, that's just your starting lineup right there. So hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully Garrett Bradbury can come in and have an awesome – rookie season and really showcase what he can do and why the Minnesota Vikings drafted him with that uh, that first round draft pick. So uh, he was out there. He looked like he was holding his own. I will be the first to admit I'm not an offensive line expert, so I'm not going to pretend to be one. Uh, but he was one of the pieces that was put in to continue to bolster this offensive line, protect Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins looked pretty sharp today. He, he comes in. He does knows what he's doing. He's more comfortable now in year number two with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he looked pretty sharp. He was uh, aware of the scenario with his rookie uh, center there, uh, but really pleased with what he was going to see. He also talked to us after practice. So here is Kirk Cousins and his thoughts on that rookie center, Garrett Bradbury. Oh, he's a class act. I mean, he tucks his shirt in every day. I think that sends a message right there. He's ready to work. He's got his shorts tied tight, tucked in jersey. I respect that. And uh, from there, he's just a hard worker. He's a smart kid, very mature. Um, I look forward to him being here a long time. And I said, uh, Garrett, last year, I think I worked with the time I got here in April to the end of the season, probably four. 
All right, Kirk Cousins right there. Uh, that was uh, his first day's experience, his opportunity to get out there with his new teammates, a uh, new center. Uh, again, likes the way that he approaches it. He takes his craft seriously. Uh, I think they're going to get along really well. Uh, the vibe that they bring, tucking their shirts in, you know, taking their job seriously and approaching it in a professional manner. That's probably a pretty good thing for Kirk Cousins to have. Not that he didn't have that last year, but good thing for him to have. Uh, reminder, uh, if you're viewing right now, you want to submit some questions for the question and answer period. We're going to get to that shortly thereafter. Uh, I'm going to get to uh, some uh, some bullet points just from OTAs today, but we're going to take your questions. Uh, we already got one in from Not Shane Olson. Thanks for watching, Shane, uh, or Not Shane, whatever you are. Um, I'm AJ Monsoor, again, live from OTAs and the Minnesota Vikings training facility, Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center, with the Twitch cast, the State of Purple Twitch cast. Uh, we're going to get th now through some notes. Again, I mentioned that offensive line. That's the biggest question for this team, the offensive line, the depth that they have. Did they bolster enough for, through free agency? A new look offensive line today. That first team offensive line went left tackle Riley Reef, left guard Pat Elfline at center was the rookie Garrett Bradbury. At right guard, the free agent signing Josh Klein, and then at right tackle, Rashad Hill today because Brian O'Neill was one of those absentees. He was there. He was just not practicing. He was watching from the sidelines. Also not practicing cornerback Mike Hughes, who continues to recover from that ACL injury. He was working on the sideline with trainers, uh, working pretty hard too, getting some resistance training and going there. Right tackle Brian O'Neill, I mentioned. Wide receiver Stefan Diggs was the only one who was absent uh, completely from today's practice. Kirk Cousins did mention that he was planning on Diggs coming tomorrow. So there's been some communication that Diggs wouldn't be here for day number one or day number two. Day number three tomorrow, Stefan Diggs is expected back. Tight end David Morgan also sat out today's OTA uh, on the sideline, and defensive end Tayshawn Bauer was also sitting out. Some of the things that you can uh, that you'll hear about, some things that stuck out today: the battle between Chad Beebe and Mackenzie Alexander today was a big one. Chad Beebe getting the best of Mackenzie Alexander. Alexander really splashed last season. People liked what they saw from him. He, he played an impact role. You know, the first first couple years in the league, he was in the doghouse with Mike Zimmer. He was being too aggressive. He had a little arrogance to him. Zimmer got through to him last year. Uh, Mackenzie Alexander became a vital piece of this defense. With some injuries, he bumped up, uh, but he really showcased that he can be in that nickel role or he can move outside if need be. Today, he was lined up against uh, Chad Beebe in that nickel spot, and Chad Beebe was really getting the better of him. Uh, again, a small guy, diminutive in size. Chad Beebe, what he lacks in that size, he does make up for with precision route running, with great hands. He was getting the best of Mackenzie Alexander, and that's not to say that Mackenzie Alexander was running, I'm sorry, was covering poorly. Chad Beebe was just beating him, and it, and it was good to see him connect um, with uh, with his quarterback today. Uh, another thing we saw today, Javon Curse, uh, J. Ron Curse, excuse me, uh, moving uh, to the nickel, uh, trying off of that nickel spot. He's been moving around safety nickel. We heard the rumor that he's going to Because a big guy. He looked out of place when he walked on the football field from day one. Looks like he should be trying out for the Timberwolves and not the Minnesota Vikings. But he's proven that he has a place here with this team. Trying out for the nickel spot this year. We'll see if that works out for him. Uh, I mentioned Tyler Conklin. Tight end Tyler Conklin had some good blocking uh, scenarios and had some good pass catching scenarios where he really put uh, the defender on the backside and really you know found himself open, caught the ball, and then continued to do that. Hands were a problem uh, for him. What up, Brenders Gaming? How you doing, buddy? Uh, thanks for joining the Twitch cast, the State of Purple Twitch cast from uh, OTAs with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Conklin struggled with catching last year, and uh, you know it's a tough thing for tight ends to do. Um, struggled catching the football, uh, but uh, this year uh, with a new focus, uh, a new leg tattoo, full leg tattoo, that was pretty impressive. Uh, Tyler Conklin back out there looking to make a roll um, with some opportunities. Now, it's the Minnesota Vikings, so I know you're all wondering, uh, how was the field goal kicking today? Unfortunately, that is something that we continue to have to pay attention to. Uh, field goal kicking today, Dan Bailey went 5 for 6. He missed one in the 35-yard range um, that was just wide to the right. Outside of that, he hit from 50-plus. He hit the rest of them 5 for 6 today. Uh, we did see uh, the rookie long snapper uh, Cutting. Uh, Austin Cutting is his name. He was in today. Uh, you know, Interesting scenario surrounding his availability to join the Minnesota 
Minnesota Vikings, uh, given his his um, commitment to uh, the armed services. Uh, he's going to likely have to uh, fulfill that commitment for two years before he can join the Minnesota Vikings during the regular season. But he was available today to be here for OTAs. Um, continues to uh, to learn from Kevin McDermott, friend of the Power Tip Morning Show, friend of KFAN Radio. Uh, just an interesting scenario there. McDermott will likely have the job for two more years, and then cutting will come in, and we'll see what will happen. Veteran, uh, veteran contracts do come into play when it comes to special teams players. As much as we love Kevin McDermott, that's going to be part of the the conversation and part of the the opportunity two years from now when cutting fulfills his services or his uh, his commitment to the armed services. So um, he uh, was here today, was filling in as the reserve long snapper. Uh, did get some reps with Dan Bailey. Did get some reps with punter Matt Weil. Uh, Matt Weil got off to a rough start, but really you know turned things around um, and, and got going again. Uh, but we were dodging some footballs over on the sidelines early on. Uh, Jordan Taylor I mentioned was filling in for Stefan Diggs. Jordan Taylor free agent wide receiver sign. Signer, signing 6'5", has the size. Didn't really do much today, but it was notable that he was filling in uh, when Diggs was out. It was Thielen on one side, Diggs, I'm sorry, uh, Taylor on the other. Uh, the quarterback, undrafted free agent quarterback, Jake Browning, that everyone was uh, was clamoring about. The Vikings paid a little bit more money to go get him. Um, you know, not really a thought that he's going to be a factor this year, but an interesting story to follow nonetheless. He looked pretty good, connected on a 50-60 yard bomb uh, late in practice and team drills, uh, was able to hold his own looks comfortable in the pocket uh, is probably going to give Kyle Sloter a push for that position whether that be the third quarterback or the practice squad quarterback um, but this is the kind of guy that could be a backup quarterback for years to come as he develops into uh, a practice squad role maybe a scouting uh, quarterback role uh, and, and continues on so um, that is kind of just a quick wrap on today's OTAs. What are we at? 23 minutes. We got started three minutes in. 20-minute wrap on OTA number one for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, if you have any questions, now's the time to submit them. Um, get them in. We'll, we'll chat over uh, what you guys want to know, what you uh, were wondering about, and what you'll probably read about in the papers. First question uh, already in the queue from not Shane Olson. How confident are we in the offensive line going into OTAs? Um, I'm going to look at the, the specific wording of that, that conversation right there. How confident are we going into OTAs? We're more confident than we were last year. I think that's, that's something you can say. Um, you have uh, you know those three interior spots. I guess the two guard spots were the big concerns for this Vikings team. You shift Pat Elfline to the left guard. Pretty confident what Elfline can bring to the table. You sign a veteran in Josh Klein on the right guard spot. Pretty confident in what he can bring to the table. Maybe not be a stellar top-of-the-line offensive line. Men, but he was a you know free agent signee in the second weekend of free agency. Uh, he'll come in and, and push there as well. Garrett Bradbury, we're, we're, we're hopeful for what he can bring at the uh, center position. Uh, he's going to be part of this offensive line right away. Then on the outsides, you're looking at Riley Reef, who hopefully has a little help next to him and Pat Elfline, and can he can have a better season because he doesn't have to worry about his left guard. And then on the other side, Brian O'Neill is your right tackle. Everyone was pleased with Brian O'Neill last year, but uh, he was not at practice today. He was there but did not participate in practice today. Um, so we'll follow up on that. We'll continue to pay attention to what he's doing, continue to pay attention to the hopefulness with this offensive line, and continue to, to track this Minnesota Vikings team as uh, they continue through OTAs into training camp and then get ready for their season. So uh, if you have any other final questions, get them in right now. Um, we'll do that. We'll take some questions on Twitter as well. Stockpile that and continue this conversation after this. But uh, we'll do this every every week, every uh, often times when we have availability down here. I'll pop in this room, get this camera, get this setup going, bring some notes to you guys, bring some videos, some interviews to you guys and gals, and, uh, and really share what's happening down here at TCO with the Minnesota Vikings as we go through the offseason. Season. So uh, if there are no further questions, pop it in. Brenders Gaming, thanks for being here. Not Shane Olson, thanks for being here. Everybody else, thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, I'm AJ Monsoor, KFAN Radio, the Power Trip Morning Show, KFAN.com, all of the above. You can follow me at on Twitter, at AJKFAN. Uh, I'd love for you to follow this Twitch page as well, uh, at AJKFAN on Twitch, twitch.tv slash AJKFAN. Uh, you can find all that info online as well. You'll be alerted every time we go live. So every time we do one of these State of Purple Twitch casts, every time we do anything, um, you'll be alerted. It'll let you know that we're going live and you can join in the conversation. So uh, looking forward to a good Viking season. Looking forward to a fun Viking season. Looking forward to interacting uh, now that we got Twitch up and rolling and having a fun conversation with you guys and, and gals uh, as we get the Minnesota Vikings season going. So uh, without any further ado then, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say peace out. We'll, uh, we'll roll the credits here let me get the uh, the uh, the old 
uh, graphics up and running again. Did I just start the music? I did. Nope, didn't start the music, but we'll get that going. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to say peace out. We'll see you guys later. Uh, we'll see you next week. OTAs, Brenders Gaming, I better see you in the Rocket League stream. We're getting that Rocket League tournament up and going as well, so pay attention to that. But until we uh, get back for the State of Purple Twitchcast, we'll see you later.